All right. So, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Abby Fish. I'm the owner of Swim Like a Fish. We are here with Riley Kaplan, who is one of the swimmers that I have worked with for a while now over the years. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to put some words and some feelings and emotions from somebody who missed their swimming season out to you guys on what they're doing to kind of cope with that. Uh, if they have any sort of advice for coaches from a swimmer's perspective of things that coaches can be doing right now to help them. Uh, so yeah, Riley and I are just going to have a quick conversation on that. And Riley, why don't you go ahead and tell the world who you are? Okay, so I'm Riley Kaplan. Um, I'm 13 years old. I live in Chevy, Massachusetts. I'm a part of the USA swim team, um, Yankee Clippers. Uh, they just started the new team. Um, and they work in, they are the Elms College swim team, college co co um, coaches, mm -hmm. um, and they are really good coaches, and I love working with them, but my swim season got canceled early because of this coronavirus, and I was coming home from school, and my dad told me that Silver's was canceled, mm -hmm. which is one of the events that I was really looking forward to. I got angry upset and I was really just disappointed on how this coronavirus took like the swim career yeah. that I've been working on but hopefully that this can hope hopefully that this coronavirus will like fade away yeah and um, we can get back into the pool and practice and become more of a good swimmer again yeah, yeah, no, that entirely makes sense. Did you, uh, did you, how long have you been out of the water now? Um, I've been out of the water for, like, maybe two weeks. Okay. Or maybe three. Yeah, so a little bit. In um, it's been hard because I've been following your workouts mm -hmm. for the past two days. Yeah. Which has been helping, but... I wish the coaches had thought, like, maybe, ooh, let's do this challenge, like, since we have to cancel yeah. this season, mm -hmm. uh, where, like, maybe do a certain workout for the day and, like, put it down somewhere, and when we go back, maybe show them, yeah. and if we miss it, then schedule that, too. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's hard. I think there's a lot of coaches out there that are scrambling to try to figure out how to best help their swimmers when they don't have water or like a way to communicate. And luckily, like I mean, we're on Skype right now, so it's pretty easy to contact you and whatnot too, but multiply you by 300. There's a lot to, lot to manage there. Um, when was your meet supposed to be? When was silver supposed to be? Um, it was supposed to be maybe, I think at the end of March, okay. March 15th. March 15th. Okay. Um, and when I heard it was canceled, it was that Friday. Yeah. I was supposed to go on Sunday. Oh, wow. Which I was really ready for. I had a lot of water, mm -hmm. good sleep that week. Yeah. And I was just so happy. And when he came home with that news, I was so, like, upset. And then right after that, I said I really wanted to go to practice to get my last practice in. Yeah. And then we got that night that they canceled the practice so then I got more upset and just I wanted to practice more so I could have a better yeah 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 and did you guys taper for that meet were you guys like coming down on your training and stuff and like kind of resting yeah. so you're you were like really amped and ready to go got your fast suit all that jazz on Thursday we actually ended early so we can stretch more yeah. And we had, like, maybe five more minutes of practice. Yeah. And they just told me to go home, drink water, have good sleep. Yeah. And then on Friday, it just all stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what did, so, like, mentally, that's obviously, like, a lot to handle, right? Like, you expected one thing, and then something else completely out of your control happened. What has helped you kind of like shift from, okay, I'm going to do silvers and I'm going to kick some butt over here to now there's a world pandemic, but I still want to make my swimming goals. Like what, what have you done to like stay positive in this time? Um, I mostly used my parents because they are a very good 
um, mental stability type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the thing was like trying to get as much sleep and maybe like watching some videos. Mm. Um, looking at your posts were pretty cool too. <laughs> seeing Thanks. all your posts since then. Um, but to stay positive, I mostly use my parents, some videos and all that, maybe some even better sleep. Yeah, it's time to rest up and get healthy for whenever you guys are able to get back into the pool. Yeah. Yeah. And has your coaches and whatnot, I'm sure they've been super communicative to like your parents on time frames and all that jazz. So you guys are being kept up to date well on uh, communication perspective of like when you potentially may be able to swim again right yeah 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 my parents actually met up with them a couple days ago they said that they want to start doing something yeah. so we can have up until our new season we can have that thing mm. where we keep our head up yeah. and they said a lot of swimmers on their team have started doing your workouts okay yeah yeah, the dry line workouts is just like, as I was telling your mom before we officially started recording, um, they've been something that I was just like, you know what, I don't really tell people about my strength and conditioning background, but I know that there's so many people sitting at home just like twiddling their fingers, not really sure what to do. And I'm the type of person that overthinks everything. So it's like, if I expected my swim season to do this, and then it got diverted over here, I think the more I kind of sat and um, like had to feel through that without taking actionable steps, like the more anxious I would become because I just like to be working towards something constantly, um, which allows me to feel like I'm furthering myself towards my goals, no matter if it's on this path, this path, or this path, I just like forward momentum. So yeah, uncontrollables are a huge part of the sport of swimming though. There's so many things that can go wrong in a swimming race uh, when it comes to like goggles falling off caps falling off like some people slip on the blocks um have you ever experienced any of those situations in, in a race yeah. until um i got my cords for my goggles my mm -hmm. goggles have been staying on pretty well i've also been using your cap which helps like my goggles stay on mm -hmm. more yeah. but like up until maybe after i quit my um my parks and rec team, mm. they kept falling off because of their type of swim caps. Yeah. Um, it, it was just really slippery, but I have definitely also slipped off the block before. Yeah. Uh, many of the starters, they mm. hesitate longer to start us for our race. Yeah. Which I have fallen off the block in that. Mm. Uh, but most of my mistakes that have happened were like during the strokes maybe I like flipped turn wrong or slipped off the wall while I was doing a yeah. flip turn mm -hmm. yeah yeah or the you know the famous like ghost turn where you're like gonna do a flip turn but then you don't quite like hit the wall and you're like one toe snags the wall and you're like this yeah. it's gonna turn out real well it's gonna be great <laughs> if I do a ghost turn then mm -hmm. literally I have to kick 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 yeah. as fast as I can usually I do kick pretty strong but mm -hmm. at those turns I have to like kick more so I could go at least a little farther off yeah. the wall yeah you gotta like start from a dead stop which is the hardest hardest way to start um so if you could take away like one thing from this kind of break mandatory break that you have from swimming like what are you hoping to gain the most from um, maybe, like, more motivation to get my strength up. Yeah. So, have a stronger swim season and take off more time. Yeah. Because if I become stronger, then that makes a better stroke. Yeah. Uh, and drops more time. Yeah. No, I think that's great, and I think... I don't know if swimmers, I feel like this is a generalization, so I can't say that this is 100% true, but I know that there's a lot of swimmers that don't enjoy dry land training because, like, we choose to swim for a reason. Like, some people don't like running. Some people aren't, like, eye-hand coordinated, so they, you know, struggle with shooting like a basketball, and that's fine. Like, swimmers are a unique breed, 
but I do think that there's no way to really swim right now unless you have an endless pool in your house or you own a pool or something like that. Um, so the dry land strength and conditioning component of training is huge at this moment. So I'm glad to hear that you're shifting what would have been your focus towards having an amazing swim season or end of last season to, you know, putting that effort into your next season. Uh, I got one, one more question for you. Um, as a swimmer, do you have any sort of advice for coaches on what you'd like to see more of all of us doing during this time that we have away from the pool? I would say maybe encourage swimmers to stretch more because mm. I know that was one of my difficulties because I would get home late, then I would eat dinner. Yeah. But I would say stretch more mm. and maybe a little dry lands before swimming, like yeah. practice starts mm-hmm. and like of the time, maybe like sending an email to the parent parent saying like, make sure your swimmer is drinking enough water, having healthy food, mm-hmm. and stretching, all that to make yeah. sure they're ready for the season. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Well, thanks for uh, hopping on and chatting with us today. You're okay. welcome. Anytime. Best of luck on your next swim season. Thank you.